I always know when there's something that I have to revisit because there's tons of comments about it when I show it in a mailbag. And this time, it's this 3 USB charger. It calls itself a 3.1 amp charger. And we saw in my playing with it in the mailbag that that seems to be a lie. Um, there's a couple of questions about my testing method there, so we'll dive a little bit deeper into that. Um, there is also some questions about uh, whether in fact it is QC quick charge compatible the way the original listing said it was. It isn't. However, we'll, we'll demonstrate that anyway and also look a little bit more at my testing methodology. Another comment pointed out that Diode Gone Wild looked at this thing about a year and a bit ago. Well, the EU version of this. This has got the North American plug on it. But the EU version, which has that plug on it, um, is the one that he looked at. And he declared it to be super dodgy and a death trap. So we'll see if this one's any better or worse. I'm not sure if I'm going to tear it down quite as far as he did. He actually unwound the transformer. I'm not sure if I'm going to go that far or not. Um, but let's get into her. So the first test that I'm going to do is to plug in my one amp load and charger doctor into one of the outputs. And you can see it is drawing one or almost one amp, 0.9 or so. And it's drawing it down a little bit to point to just under five volts. If I unplug the resistors, it comes up to about 5.3. So with that load on there, now I'm gonna add this guy, the smart load, onto another port. So there we've got the smart load plugged in and it's set for 0.99 amps. And I think you can just barely see the charger doctor still doing its thing back there. So now that we're into two different ports, if this thing is putting out one amp each on three different ports, then it should handle this, right? Actually, let me turn that down a little bit more. Oops, the other down. There we go. So 950 milliamps is what this one's going to draw when we turn it on. And I'll just tap to the voltage screen. And you can see that's showing 3.3 volts, which is dragged it way the hell down. And this thing is so dim you can't even see it. So there is still some voltage coming out, but it's obviously not capable of putting one amp to each of the three outputs. I'll turn that off, and everything's back to happy again. So that's a fail. The other thing I uh, tried in my uh, in the mailbag video, so that's on right now, and it's drawing 0.9 amps, 5.3 volts. The other thing that I tried was the quick charge modes and it didn't respond to them at all. I actually had the charger doctor on there just so that I could see what it's doing when I put it into quick charge mode. So I'll put it into the various quick charge modes and nothing changes down here. The voltage doesn't go up. It's supposed to, but it doesn't. So somebody in the comments asked if maybe this uh, charger doctor is interfering with the quick charge mode. So I'll get out this Samsung charger, which has adaptive fast charging mode, and it can put out up to nine volts for the fast charging mode. So we'll plug in this EU Samsung charger through the death adapter into the power bar. There you have 900 and some milliamps. I'll put it into quick charge mode. Um, I think that's the one that this one responds to. Yeah, and there you can see that it's pumped up to 9 volts. So, first of all, this charger doctor can detect it. Second, it's not blocking the quick charge mode. So, when we go back to this guy and try it again. Well, I already tried it twice and it doesn't actually do any quick charge mode. So, another lie. So the other thing that Diodes Gone Wild did and another link that somebody else sent me on this thing as well was from Finland 
showing that the voltage isolation on this thing was crap. So, um, I've got, just slide that in a little bit. Can you see that in the corner there? So that sets the volts AC. I'm just going to go across the power bus here in volts AC mode. Got nothing. Let's go up to volts DC mode. There's 5.17 as expected. How about millivolts? 7.6 millivolts. So that's three kilohertz. So that's a switching frequency. That's not the, uh, that's not AC line voltage coming through. However, when I go from, oh, let's say the hot side there, I'm just going to move this a little bit to either the line or the neutral, it's like 52 volts AC and 49 volts AC. That's with this probe on the V plus with it on the ground, same thing, 49 volts and 51 volts. And even if I go onto the actual ground of my AC voltage here, still 50 volts across the positive and across the ground. That's not a surprise because uh, the, the ground and the neutral will be bonded. That's standard in my part of North America. Um, so that should show the same, but 50 volts from anywhere in the AC line up to either of those, that's not what you want to see. So I agree with diodes going wild. That's dodgy. Let's crack this thing open and just see what it looks like inside just for shits and giggles. Today's investigation is powered by Rocky Mountain Strong Lager. 6.4% alcohol from Fort Geary Brewing in Winnipeg. And I'm not sure why a brewery in the middle of the prairies is calling a beer Rocky Mountain, but whatever. It's it's a decent summer drinking lager. I'm, I'm not unhappy with that. Okay, back to this. Now, it looks like it's either glued or, or clipped together some way. I'll try and get in here without damaging myself too badly. Use the traditional cheap, shitty USB power supply from China opening tool. Oh, yeah. We're getting there. So there are some clips up there. Okay, so that's got a couple of pins, one of which I broke. And it just drops right out. There's a little bezel for the LEDs. Okay, so that is identical inside. So this is the just the AC pins, which just kind of socket onto there. Wow. Not even all that firmly. I mean, if that was a proper socket, you would expect that not to happen. Okay, so that just kind of jams in there. So we got a bridge rectifier, a couple of resistors, switch mode power supply chip, and diode and resistor, 400 volt 2.2 microfarad capacitor. So that'll be on the input side. Yeah, the bridge rectifier goes to that. Yep, so that's not unexpected. Um, but one thing that was mentioned uh, that Diode Gone Wild pointed out, and I agree with, that's a really narrow gap. Especially there, there's a track that comes up here and goes to there. That's the gap between the high voltage and the low voltage side, so that kind of sucks. Um, I don't know if I'm going to find anything on here that he didn't find. Um, like I said, he tore this transformer right apart and found that the windings were so close together and weren't very well insulated. So that's, uh, that's a problem. And that agrees with what that Finnish website said, which no doubt I will overweigh in editing. So yeah, it's, 
I mean, the circuit itself is just a typical USB power supply. Um, had they increased that gap, had they used a better transformer, it would be a better device. It is what it is. Well, um, I believe Big Clive describes it best as the cheap, shitty USB power supply from China. Um, it lies about what it is. It's not very safe. But I didn't really buy it to use it. I bought it to play with. I didn't buy it to give it to my kids to, to use for charging up their phones while they're talking in the bathtub. So I'm not, I'm not sad about this. It was fairly cheap. I often expect these eBay sellers to lie to me. Maybe not this blatantly, but um, let's see if we can see what that chip is, shall we? Kind of looks like they don't want us to know what that chip is. Hmm. But it's not going to be anything too weird, I don't suppose. Just a standard little USB power supply chip, uh, switch mode power supply chip. So it occurred to me as I was putting my stuff away that I probably should check what the leakage current is. Because it's, yeah, you know, it's not the volts that kills you, it's the current, right? Um, and that 50 volts, it's excessive, but yeah, all switch mode power supplies, or well, almost all of them, have some leakage back to the AC side. Not much, not as much as that, certainly. Um, this one, when I, I checked it off camera, it was uh, just shy of 20 volts. So it's, uh, it's you obviously want nothing, but you can ha you can touch 20 volts at DC anyway, and it won't. It's not enough to break down your skin resistance normally. So let's try this guy. I've got my meter set to current, um, and I've just uh, set a relative here. I've kind of to zero it out. So right now it's only reading you know, 20 milliamp. No, uh, 0.6 milliamps, just out in, in midair here. So if I go between the voltage and that ground, or in the EC ground, there's essentially nothing. It's negligible. Point, what's the highest we saw there? 0.2 or 0.3 milliamps. So let's actually go into microamps then. And I'll sort of zero my meter out again here. Uh, so with the probe shorted, we'll go into relative mode. So now we're going relative to what the probe shorted was. So I'll go from the DC ground to that ground. 61 microamps. To the hot, 69 microamps. 59 microamps. And to the other pole there. 58, 57, 56 microamps. So it's not nothing, but I don't think that's, yeah, it's, it's worrisome, but it's not a showstopper. I think the, the lack of gap inside and the, um, the crappy transformer that Diodes Gone Wild found is probably the bigger issue in this one. Well, that was, that was fun for a few minutes. Um, learn something like several of you said, yes, this thing is, uh, is not a good power supply. Uh, I never really expected it to be, especially for the price, but it was, uh, interesting to take part. I'm not sure what's the most disappointing thing. I mean, the transformer and the, the fact that there is 50 volts AC coming through to the, to, to the uh, low voltage side, that's bothersome. Um, these cheesy little pins here, that looks just like something that could be an arcing risk, you know, and it's not drawing that much current, so it's not going to be huge arcing, but still, you don't want that. You want a firm connection. Suppose a guy could get in there some pliers, but that's cheesy too. Why would you want to do that? Oh, well, it was fun while it lasted and... I got a quick little teardown out of it, which is kind of all I ever expected to get out of this thing anyway. Thanks for watching. If you got any more comments, if I made more mistakes or uh, left more questions unanswered than I addressed, uh, down in the comments as usual. I will talk to you later.